the guards! No! Who is... how? Why? What can this mean? Why would the Daiichi attack us? Who has sent you? Who commands you? What about you, madam? I will stay with my husband. You were that child, Sandokan? are the only son of the Raja of Kiltar. This was your father's, and now it belongs to you. Why haven't you told me this before now? I didn't want to make you suffer for any reason. That explains some of the dreams I've been having, but why are you telling me now? <coughs> I am old, and my time has come. You just caught a chill fishing. It's nothing more than that. I'll go consult Jory-san right away. She'll take care of you in no time. Every river sooner or later reaches the sea, my boy, and you know I don't fear the water. I need one of your potions for Makassar. It's true, my medicines are powerful. They've saved your life twice, if you recall. At least three times, Jory San. Don't forget last summer and that snake. I spoke with Makassar. I told him yesterday to prepare for the long voyage. Uh, uh, you? No! Calm yourself. A man should never be ashamed to cry. That night we were attacked by surprise. And perhaps there's one man who knows why. The governor of Labuan, James Brook. But remember, the truth is a fish that swims at the bottom of men's hearts and is not easily caught. Go, boy. Take the medallion and follow your destiny. You bound for Labuan? Only place this boat's bound for is a dockyard. <laughs> Last typhoon kept it cavorting like a filly for six days. Are there any other ships bound for there that you know of? Go to Johnny's Tavern. They all slake their thirsts there before shoving off. Be sure to ask for Johnny. Hey, uh, that'll lift your spirits. You're out of luck, my boy. You might find passage to Taiwan or Bangkok, but otherwise... I'm not exactly looking for work on a ship. It's just that I have to get to Labuan as soon as I can. Anybody in for another couple of throws? Okay. Well, I won again. You're gonna wind up hating me if I keep doing this. You can bet on it, stranger! Now I throw! Oh, don't be like that. You'll see that luck will be on your side this time. 
Gee, now, isn't that a shame? I mean, really. Well, I surely am doing my best to give you back your money, but you're not making it easy. Yes, indeed. You know, my granny always used to say... Looks like the gambler with the fancy mind. hat's getting in a little sure over his hat. Right if he's not so, careful, I may have to lend him a hand. Look, don't go telling him I said so, but if you can get him out of here before trouble starts, my boy, you'd be doing me a big favor. Come on, my luck could change at any time. After having watched him in action, I think I know the kind of bait that'll pull him away from that table. Yep. I'm gonna let you in on something that no one, and I mean no one knows. This little baby here tells me what Lady Luck has in store for me. And when it turns green, it means my luck's outrageous. There you are. Come on, hurry up. Miss LaBelle's been waiting for you for hours. Yeah, well, tell her I'm busy, all right, friend? It's not polite to keep a lady waiting. I'm gonna have to explain to Miss LaBelle that you never leave a table when you're hot. Another ten minutes and I would have broken them. She just has to... Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, I don't remember making a date with a Miss LaBelle. You'd better start explaining and fast. Let's just say you avoided ending up as fish bait. Hmm, now I get it. Johnny paid you to keep me from cleaning out his customers' pockets. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Well, in that case, I'll be glad to repeat it. Fair enough. Those Chinese would have slit your throat, but I'll content myself with smashing your face in. Fine by me, but let's do it elsewhere. I don't like to fight in stinky alleyways. Just say where and when. At dawn, by the lighthouse. Make sure you show up. Don't worry, I'll be there. Follow your destiny, go to loved ones. I got good news for you. There's a ship setting sail for Borneo. Hmm. This gentleman's the ship's cook. He says if you lend a hand peeling a few potatoes, he'll give you free passage. I'm very grateful to you, my friend. Wait a minute. First, I have to... Don't worry, I'll be there. You don't understand. I have to go to the lighthouse. I'll be a quarter of an hour, maybe less. Consider yourself lucky. Now I know what you Chinese people call peeling a couple of potatoes. If I'd had any idea of what I was getting into, I would have asked for a real wage. Thank you, Nanny Ann. That's all, Nanny. With that last dance, I've done my duty. You make pots shine like autumn moon in Mountain Lake. Now the cook's a poet. Well, you'd certainly be proud of me, Makassar. You free to go now? He who does good job during day sleeps well with many wonderful dream. That violin will help me dream of better times. So sorry to disturb your meditation. But the English army has authorized me to ask for my money to be returned to me immediately. My dear sir, how can the English army oppose the powers of fate? I'm afraid Napoleon's entire army would be hard-pressed to defeat your bad luck. Mm. Get him! You leave me no choice! <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> what are you waiting for? Go look for him! Grandpa always said, never trust a banker. Hey, what are you doing huh? here? I want to know what you're doing here. 
talk about coincidence, I'll bet you're on board to get away from me. Hold on there, partner. This ship is a gold mine, an opportunity I just couldn't lose. And besides that, just what might your excuse be for not showing up? Trust me, I have a very important reason for being on this ship. Oh, sure. Let's settle our differences. Once and for all. Mm. There he huh? is! Over there! I'd completely forgotten about those three. <laughs> Thanks, I owe you one. I'll teach you a lesson. I have to keep you alive. Watch out! Behind you! <laughs> Damn your eyes, will you hold still for one second? You certainly throw a good punch. You're not too bad yourself. Huh? Look out! Huh? What the heck's he do- <laughs> Scoundrels always get what they deserve. <laughs> my way to organize her rescue. I beg you, come quickly. The important thing is to absolutely avoid panic. Sandal God, they said time to dream and time to stay awake. There was another man here. What happened to him? Everyone wisely boarding lifeboats. And I suggest we do same if we don't wish to become like roast picking duck. How could you be so foolish? Mary Ann, open the door! Help, that Mary idiot isn't Mary coming Mary back, Mary. that's for certain. Mary Ann, I'm going to look for help! Someone help! There's a girl trapped below! Let me by! Let me by! Get you some water. Must be a little around here somewhere. Ever so difficult finding an axe, I'll have you know. Less difficult than finding a brain under that hat of yours. Oh, good lord. Oh, Marianne, my dear, I'm so glad you're safe. You mean you saved me? Yes, well, as I've said before, proper organization is always the best solution to any problem.
What a great pity that boy had great strength of character. Well, look at the waves washed up. I figured you were at the bottom of the sea. I was, but then I got to thinking that despite everything, even your company was preferable to spending the rest of my days with the fish. Now I'll learn the real story. That's where I have to go. Up there. Don't tell me you want to join the British Army. I've got some business with the governor. Well, good luck. I've heard tell he's the most powerful man on the island of Borneo. For your sake, I hope he's a good friend. Too bad we never got around to our fight. Let's meet tonight at the port, if you can manage to stay alive that long. It may be tough, but I'll see what I can do. So it was Lord Guilonk who saved her then? Yes, sir. He told us himself how he crossed the Curtain of Flames with great bravery. The only thing great about Lord Guilonk is his lively imagination. Where is my niece now? She's at the residence, sir. Very good. Let her have a good long rest. I'll Out, see her later. Or I'll shoot you as you stand! Huh? State your business and be quick about it, or I'll drop you, so help me. It'll take more than you to stop me. Let me see the governor. Yeah, you and whose army? You must be insane. There's not a chance in hell I can miss from this range. I wouldn't be so sure. You're trembling like a leaf. I want to be received by Governor Brooke right now. And who might you be? Hmm? It's not possible. I can't believe it. I can assure you that I undertook a very thorough investigation of the matter. The Diage's action, albeit very cruel, was a legitimate act of war. But why would my father have had their leader killed? I imagine he wanted more power. He had changed much of late. He had become greedy and violent. His own guards refused to defend him the night of the attack. I'm awfully sorry, young man, but you did ask me for the truth. said to follow my destiny. Now what? <laughs> you have no idea what you missed. Shameless, a German banker running around in his underpants like that. <laughs> What's so funny? You'd be laughing too if you'd seen him. Look, if you're worried about a little fight, forget it. I don't exactly feel like fisticuffs myself tonight. I've been through too much with you to hold a grudge over Miss LaBelle. Besides, they must have poisoned me back there in that tavern, judging by my belly ache. Say that again? Which part? The fight or the poison? He lied to me. James Brooke lied to me. The guards didn't refuse to defend us. They were poisoned. You told me yourself, Makassar. The truth swims at the bottom of men's hearts and isn't easily caught. I swear to you, Makassar, I'll find it. Hey, are you feeling all right? I never felt better, my friend. Now it's between you, me, and Governor James Brooke. <sighs> that stupid cook's burnt the toast again. Good morning, Uncle. And where have you been? I've been riding. Do you consider it proper for a young lady to come to the breakfast table straight from the stables? I must say, I can't understand what they taught you in that wretched ladies' college. I'm sorry you're so disappointed with my education. I consider it my responsibility to improve your behavior. And how do you intend to improve my behavior, Uncle? Do I need to remind you, young lady, that now you live in my house, you will obey my rules. To begin with, all that music is filling your head with too many fancy ideas. 
From now on, you are forbidden to play the violin. You are... easier if I'd burnt to death in the fire on the ship. It doesn't seem cold enough for a fire. And this certainly wasn't meant to be firewood. If I'm not allowed to play it anymore, Nanny, I'd just as soon see it destroyed. More regulations. Hmm? He's always like this just before inspections. You have no idea what poor Cook has to go through at times like this, really. If it weren't for you, Nanny, why do you think these inspections upset him so much? Isn't that strange? Where did that one go? Over there, sir! Well done. Hold your fire until the ship is docked and then fire off our best three-gun salute. Not at the huh? ship, I hope. I was just checking the proper trajectory of the gun, sir. That would certainly be a solution. I've just reviewed the honor guard and thoroughly inspected the rest of the troops. Damn it! There's that boy! I'm sorry, sir. I could swear I'd thought of everything. I don't know anyone else here in Labuan, sir. I'd be very grateful if you could help me find a job. Your name doesn't help you, you know. If you could see your way clear to overlook my family background, sir, I'd appreciate it. All I want to do is live a normal life from now on, that's all. Very well, we do need someone to work in the stables. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Definitely not made from the same stuff as his father. I don't suppose he can cause much trouble as a stable boy. door when I left. Such a nuisance. There, that should fool me. Ah. Huh? Who is it? I'm sorry to bother you, sir, but I was only just informed that you'd returned to the mansion. There's something I need to discuss. What could be so important at this hour, Guilonk? Well, sir, I've got an idea. What if we had the bagpipes play along with the drums? <sighs> it might make a wonderful impression. Lord Guilonk, if you do not get out of my sight immediately, I will use your innards as a bagpipe! Yes, sir. us of our land. But why close them down? And after only one day, I think the Queen's envoy will find all this very interesting. If 
only these stairs had a proper banister. Lady Nelson Pickett Carradine. Mm -hmm. Her Majesty thought that the air here in Borneo would do wonders for my lungs, so she decided I would be the perfect person for this little trip. We are all extremely honored by your visit here, Lady Carradine. It's all so picturesque. Would you mind very much hitching this creature up to a carriage? Huh? Oh. Don't worry, I found a solution. You really must forgive Lord Guilonk. It's just that he's been waiting for this day all year. Don't apologize, Governor. I understand. Take it easy. Hold it. Where do you think you're going? You're supposed to unsaddle these horses. So I suppose you'll want to have a nice hot bath after such a long journey. When you're finished, my niece and I look forward to your company at dinner. I've only just started. And that racket outside doesn't help. I'll have them stop immediately. Don't bother. These will keep me from getting distracted. I have a very urgent message to deliver to Lady Constantine. You see, I'm her secretary. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Do you mean but Lady uh, Nelson Pickett Carradine? Your memory for names is really quite exceptional. Yes, it is. It's imperative that I speak to Her Majesty's special envoy immediately. You're not going anywhere. Those are my orders and they're very clear. Don't you realize why you were given those orders? My job is to follow uh, orders, not to question them. So, do you think you can name all the kings of England? Of course, all the kings and the queens. Hey, I'm impressed. Let's see if you remember what this is called. <laughs> Just in time, I have some very interesting news for the Queen's envoy. You keep the guards occupied. I sure hope you can help me, sir. Who are you and how did you get in here? A correspondent for the Times. I'm doing an article on what life is like in the colonies for you military chaps. Sentry! Who gave this man permission to enter the compound? <laughs> Halt! Lady Caradine, please come out here. We have something very important to tell you. <laughs> Get out of my way, you filthy murderer. I know all about your miserable scheme. <sighs> we look, have these men arrested immediately. The guards! We're under attack! <sighs> Lady Caradine, please help us. We have to talk to you. If you surrender now, I'll let you go. First, I think Her Excellency would like to hear about the mines of Kiltar. Where the devil is she? I want them alive! Get them, you numbskulls! It doesn't look good. I suppose you'll just have to jump then. You're kidding. I'm not a kangaroo, my friend. Make sure they don't escape. You gotta let them get away. Your weapon. It's great to see you in action, but it's no use. Oh. 
That'll teach them to challenge the Queen's guards. Lock them up and make sure they can't escape. You know, when I joined you, I thought my life would change. Instead, it's just the same as always. I just can't understand it. I don't want them to ever escape. Do I make myself clear? Well, do you find everything in order, Lady Caradine? For now. Good, if you'll follow me, my niece is expecting us for dinner. Why do I feel this man is not to be trusted? She must have heard us. She was right there in Brooke's office. Why didn't she come out to hear what we had to say? Don't be a child. What do you think? Brooke probably managed to turn our head with some diamonds from Kiltar. Then there's no hope left for us. <laughs> That's strange. The Zook doesn't show any sign at all. Anything could happen. Listen, if we can set fire to these beams, they'll have to open the door. That way, we'll have our chance to escape. <laughs> Think of something else. I've been through fire with you already. Oh, doesn't that look good? Well, maybe that's just what it needed. I can't say it likes the looks of this at all. It's poison. Thank you. I can't remember when I've enjoyed myself so much. I'm sorry to disturb you, Your Excellency, but we need to weigh anchor immediately. There's a hurricane headed this way, and we must put out to sea before it arrives. I'm not sure my work's finished. I'm afraid if we don't prepare to leave immediately, I won't be able to guarantee the safety of my ship. Hmm. Hey, cool. You sure if I do this, I won't have any more night duty? Absolutely. Now get to work. on all the fun. Goodbye, Lady Caradine. Oh, I expect we'll be meeting again, Lord Brook. And I think you should try to be a bit more understanding of your niece. She's the only truly precious thing you have here. <gasps> That's a shame, sir. She'll miss her chance to see the parade of the Fusiliers. Way anchor! I'll find some way of bringing you to justice, James Brooke. The girl I saved from the fire played the violin. Hey, I found a friend who'll give us a boat, but he says there's a storm brewing. We are not going to let a little storm stand in our way, my friend. Don't worry, you bring me luck! Why can't you ever tell me where we're going? Good luck, boys! Wherever you travel, may the wind always be your friend! What do you mean the prisoners have escaped? They apparently stole a boat about an hour ago and left Lavoine, Your Excellency. You are an incompetent bungler! I'm deeply sorry, Your Excellency. Shall I have a ship sent out to search for them? Send a ship out in this weather? No, we'll let them get away. Huh? The storm raging out there will free me of those two forever. 
Since we joined forces, I've done nothing but risk my life. Weren't you thirsting for adventure? Well, after a fire, a poisoning attempt, and escaping from an English prison, I've had my fill, thanks. Look, there's something there. I certainly hope the governor didn't send out a ship to look for us. No, it's not a ship. I don't know what it is. Looks like an island. It'll give us shelter from the storm. Find Yanitz. Yanitz, where are you? Yanitz! Where are you, Yanitz? Where is he? You know the one thing I hate more than anything else? is a Tuesday shipwreck. Anchovies in my boots on an island without amenities. <sighs> Not a place for miles around that serves a decent breakfast. And picking up a nasty cold, <clears throat> simply awful. Hey, the gods heard my plea. I'm gonna have breakfast after all. Uh-huh. I'll be... Hey, quit that! I'm not your mother. Oh well, I'll just have to look for Sandal Can on an empty stomach. I'd better not lose my footing here. Get away from me! This is all your fault. <laughs> Don't much like a welcoming committee. <laughs> Thanks a lot, pal. Well, that doesn't bode too well for a castaway on this little island. Small fortress. All right, who's in here? Come out in the open and fight like a man. Huh? Yanitz! Don't tell me. After all you've been through, a drop of rum is just what the doctor ordered. That wretched skeleton gave me the creeps. Beware the island of the dead, sailor. Well, something strange is going on in this place, be it alive or dead as a doornail. Well, dead, alive, or in between, it's our home for now, so get used to it. You're not thinking of staying on this godforsaken port. Well, I can't go back to Labuan, and there's no other place I can go either, so... Let's see what the Zook says. Hey, look at that. She says yes. Ask it to come up with a boat. Don't scorn the Zook. She never makes a mistake. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Hey, yeah. you oh, come home oh, and about the rum. rum. One bottle for fifteen men? Can't do much with that, can you? Where is that stupid Kevin boy? Come aboard him. Here I am, sir. Get that hat off. You're no pirate. Clean the ship and cook up some grub. The ship is clean, and the stew is bubbling in the pot, sir. Add some potatoes to it. Yes, sir. It looks like no one's been on this island for a long time. It'll be that much easier to find the treasure. 
just what we needed. A bunch of pirates. Yannitz, wake up. Is the coffee ready? We have to get out of here immediately. Uh, all right, but you don't have to yell. Come on, let's get moving. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. We have to find the small fortress Mortimer talked about and make that our camp. <clears throat> See why I was in such a hurry? Band of pirates. We might be able to grab their ship and make our getaway before they come back. No, I'm not gonna slink off this island like a coward. What we have to do is find out why they're here at all. Come on, Mortimer, get this place cleaned out on the double! To the east of the promontory. Captain! <gasps> Look what we found in the fortress, sir! A parrot! <gasps> Pieces of eight! What do you mean by that, sir? Pieces of eight is his name. He was John Mortimer's parrot. Take him away quick. He gives me the shivers. Yes, sir! <laughs> Seeing that parrot is like seeing a ghost. Come up here, all of you. Special celebration today. A triple ration of rum for everybody. <laughs> if they find us, they'll chop us into little pieces. I'm going to beat them to that treasure. Before we do that, we have to find a way to put them out of business. Come on. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. But there are ten of them and only two of us. Well, in the words of a great military strategist, divide and conquer. Yeah, those pirates are nothing but filthy swine. You're right. If it wasn't for that treasure, I would have left long ago. If Typhoon is right, it must be an impressive haul. Enough to keep us rich for the rest of our lives. What was that noise? <laughs> well, two down and eight to go. I make it. I'm tired of being a cabin boy and a dishwasher for Typhoon. I want to be a pirate. You're a little young for that yet, lad. Pirating's a hard life. <laughs> Run and get a basket or a bucket or something. Right away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you back already? That was quick work. I don't... And with you, that makes three. This is a pretty useful game. Makes a great hideout and a good place to keep prisoners. If we can just capture three or four more of them, we'll be in control. What's their chief going to think when he realizes that a third of his crew is gone? You're absolutely right. I'd give anything to see his face, wouldn't you? Those sniveling cowards, they weren't men enough. They run away. Where the devil could they have gone, Captain? The ship's still out there at anchor. The ghosts have got them. That's what I think. Yes, it must have been old Mortimer's ghost seeking vengeance. That's enough of this ghost talk. I don't want to hear any more of it now or ever. There are no such things as ghosts. Everybody knows that, you superstitious fools. Those three are just off wolfing somewhere, and they'll feel the cat when I find them. It's hard to believe that Saint-Million would just disappear like that, Skipper. East of the promontory. That way, men. Let's go dig up our treasure. Fifteen men and a dead man's chest. Yo, ho, ho, everybody. Cabin boy. I'll show you I'm good for more than washing dishes. I'm gonna hunt down whoever else is on this island. Be careful, it's easy to slip on these rocks. Quick, yak him! Get a move on! Sam was talking about. <laughs> that old devil Mortimer 
Marshall found the right guard for his treasure. It's a skeleton in a tree, just like old Sam said it'd be. A skeleton in a tree? Get away! Here's what we dig. Now get to work, you scum! This is the way they came. Sambillon, dear old Batal, who tied you up like that? Well, well. <gasps> Looks like we have a guest, one with a toad sticker, too. Take it easy, lad. <laughs> and have a seat. And that makes four in our little company. Make that five. Here's the latest recruit. Good work, Sandakan. We have them in the palm of our hand. All we have to do now is find the treasure. Uh, I'm afraid the pirates have already beaten us to it. Huh? Where is it? By the skeleton you found the other day. They're digging at the spot its finger's pointing at. In that case, they haven't found a thing, and they're not going to. What in the world are you talking about? I moved the skeleton's arm. It was pointing in another direction before. So the treasure's ours. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Let's go get it. Wait a minute. The pirates will slaughter you. We may have a few of their men, but they've still got a lot of muskets and powder. What's the matter, boy? Did a tarantula bite you? I was trying to tell you that I can help you get rid of the pirates. Huh? We're not going to trust that kid, are we? He's hardly out of the cradle. I'm old enough to fend for myself, and I tracked down your cave on my own. Well, he's a bright lad. There's no denying it. And just how do you think you can help us? I'll tell you after you've untied me and my friends and taken an oath to divide the treasure with us. Huh? We've been digging for hours and not even a brass farthing! I love that treasure even if it means digging all through the night! finger was pointing up here. Ah, I see the mouth of a cave there. Come on! Uh, let me go. Where the devil are we? Look! <gasps> it's Mortimer's treasure! Look, this must have been his uniform! And this was his pistol. Mortimer never could have carried those heavy chests through the tunnels all by himself. There must be another entrance! Look up there, that looks like a trap door. Let me see what I can do about that. So that's how they got it in here. You won't believe this, boss, but we're right under the floor of the fortress. Their idiot chief slept on top of the treasure without even knowing it. He'll figure it out soon enough, unless we come up with a bright idea. Well, if no one else has a bright idea, I have. Huh? huh? There's only one person on this island who can frighten Typhoon. Listen, pieces of eight, pieces of eight. That's it, of course, Mortimer's ghost. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Oh. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. One of you idiots, bring me some rum. I'm the double. We dug a hole deep enough to bury a hundred treasure chests in. And what did we get for our trouble? Not a sausage. Curse your evil soul, dumb Mortimer. I should have killed you a hundred times. Pieces of eight. Pieces of eight. All right. Who said that? Who was Who it? Who dares uh -huh. to desecrate the memory of John Mortimer? <gasps> Could it be Typhoon, the vile coward who murdered <gasps> me? It can't be John Mortimer's ghost. Well met, Spice <gasps> Starlight, proud Typhoon. <gasps> Pieces of eight! Pieces of eight! I apologize for having killed you, John. What more do you want? 
Not the apologies of a fool and coward. <laughs> Leave my island at once. <sighs> I don't believe it. I hope I have made myself abundantly clear, Typhoon. Yes, sir. Very clear. Then delay no longer. Away with you. I'm not afraid of your ghost, John. What can you do to the living after all? Drag them down to the nethermost pits of hell, if that be what their wretched lives merited. Follow me, men. Hurry! <laughs> Excellent ghost imitation, my friend. Now you're going to be the one to tremble with fear. Where's the treasure? Speak, you scum. Who's in your gang? Don't tell me you put on that little show all by yourself. You're right, Typhoon. He's not alone. He has several trusty comrades in arms. I'm on your side, too. Santa Ken, you're about to die like a filthy serpent! Don't I get any say in the matter, you windbag? Step up here and cross cutlasses with me if you dare! <laughs> 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 I'll allow you to live this time, but if you ever come back to my island, your life is forfeit! You hear me? Uh, yes. yeah, Farewell, no, Typhoon, no, 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 and good riddance! If they come back, they'll be asking for it. You must be very happy now. You finally got a place you can call your own. Huh? What about you, Yanitz? Are you still planning on getting out of here? I'm of two minds. The call of the sea is very tempting. I can only say I'll miss you, friend. It's remarkable when I think of all the things we've been through together, you and I. Yes, there was the fire and the escape of the hurricane at sea. Never a dull moment. And it's not over yet. I still have an account to settle with James Brooke. Well, now you've got a perfect place for a base of operations, this island of yours. And lots of weapons, courtesy of Typhoon. It'll be a wonderful adventure, Sandokan, and I can't wait to start. My friends, thank you for your help. You're free to go if you want. We'll stay with you, Sandokan, if you'll have us. I think we'll come in handy. Then swear loyalty to the group and to each other with your hands on this medallion. I have, I have I swear loyalty, loyalty to our group, group and to our leader, Sandokan. Oh no, look! Help! There's a real ghost after all! I think I know who the mischief maker is. It's my overly affectionate pal here. Paco! That's what we should call the chameleon. Paco and Yanis, they make the perfect couple. <laughs> now I can plan my revenge.
time, I was beginning to feel like a pickled herring. Next time, I am the driver. All right, men, let's get this. We have to break out of here. Somebody get me some rope. The water level's rising. <sighs> so far, so good. Only one more to go. gonna leave you to face this all by yourself. Go! Those thieving bandits have been here. They want to let him! We still don't know how it happened, sir. Thunderheads! They were within your grasp and you let them sir. get away again. Perhaps not all of them managed to escape. We found this beside the river. Well done, Father Inge. This means that he must still be around here somewhere. Mm. Home every corner of the forest. I want him dead or alive. This is terrible. I have to tell Yanis immediately. I was lucky to get away without being seen. Yanis, they found Sandokan's medallion, and now Governor Brooks calling out every available man to form a search party. I've got to find them before they do. Keep an eye on the fortress. Don't you worry, Yanis. I won't let it out of my sight. Not for a minute. Oh, I'm so glad you're awake, sir. Miss Marianne was quite worried. Then it was Miss Marianne who came to my rescue. Of course it was. Now, just stay there, and I'll bring you something to eat. Uh. Oh, it's 
good to see you up and about, sir. Surely Miss Mary Ann doesn't live alone in this palace. Indeed not. The palace belongs to her uncle, Lord Brooke. Oh. Is something wrong, sir? Might I have the privilege of saying goodbye to Miss Mary Ann before I leave? Uh... I wish to thank her for her great kindness. <gasps> you play very beautifully. I am very happy to see that you're feeling better, sir, although I do not know your name. Rajid Asanor, the lady. Are you from India? Yes, my ship got caught in the hurricane. Oh, that must have been dreadful. But thank goodness it's all over and done with, and you're safe now. Thanks to you, but now I must... Miss Marianne, there's a message from your uncle. Whew. Thank you, Nanny. My uncle is pursuing a ferocious bandit named Sandokan. A bloodthirsty monster whose only desire is to slaughter all of us. Why in the world would you think he... Oh, of course you would never doubt your uncle, would you? farthing. He'll be looking for him everywhere tonight, even under his own bed. Hmm. Nobody's thought of looking for him in the governor's palace. My magic Zook will tell us the truth. <laughs> he's in the palace and he's all right, thank God. been the happiest day of my life. Thank you. The way you said that made it sound as though you will be leaving soon. Going back to your wife or fiancé, I imagine. Is she a princess or a Maharani? No, she's simply the girl I'm in love with. Oh, well, I'm sure I wish you both every happiness and a long and blissful uh, life together. Miss Marianne, I know you don't understand, but there is something that will forever prevent us from being together. If two people really love each other, I don't see how anything can keep them apart. Hey, wait a minute, you. Stop there. Stop, I said. Oh, Lord Quayla. <coughs> how dare you assault a friend of mine like that? But Miss Marianne, I thought she was... I was given no chance to present myself. I am Rajid Asanor, uh, sir. Uh, There's something going on behind this wall. <gasps> Who are they, anyway? Who do I have the pleasure of addressing, sir? It's Sandokan! I have the impression that I've seen you before, sir. I shouldn't think so, Lord Guila. After all, Mr. Asanor just arrived from India. His ship was caught in the hurricane. If you ask me, he's had a whack on the head and doesn't know who he is anymore. I'd say his heart's been hit, not his head. You mean he's in love with that pretty blonde girl? What's your conclusion, then? 
He must have drowned in his attempt to escape, Your Excellency. There seems to be no other solution. Wouldn't we have found his body? Not necessarily, Your Excellency. After all, the storm the other night was so violent it even sank a ship. As far as I can tell, the only thing that's gone to the bottom here in Labuan is your brain, uh, you idiot. Well, the gentleman visiting your niece said his ship went down in the hurricane. There's a stranger in the palace with my niece. Mm. Oh, that's where the rascal's been hiding. You fool, that man is Sandokan. I think you stayed behind because you wanted to tell me something. Am I right? Mm. I've kept this with me for a long time, hoping against hope to see you. But how can this be? I carried your unconscious body off that burning ship and made sure you came to no harm. So it was you who saved me. And I've been in love with you ever since that day. Do you mean it, Rajid? My name is not Rajid, Marianne. <gasps> I am the son of the Maharaja of Kiltar. I am Sandokan. But an evil and rapacious man murdered my family, stole my kingdom, and made you and I enemies. You mean my uncle? Arrest that man! <gasps> Listen to your heart, Marianne. It will tell you the truth. Get that rogue out of my sight! Who knows what lies he told you to gain the protection of the palace? What will happen to him now? Very simple, my dear. I'll have him confined in a cell in the dungeons overnight and put to death first thing in the morning. Oh, no! He seemed such a well-mannered gentleman. You're absolutely right, Nanny. That's exactly what he is. He's anything but that fierce bandit they make out. Miss Marianne, your uncle... I'll listen not to Governor Brooke, but to... my heart. Nanny, I want some of that sleeping potion you used to give me. Do you think the shackles are tight enough? Ah, you'll never get loose now. Why trumps? I hope you put enough in, Nanny. Now go. Gentlemen. I brought some wine for you. I hope Uncle doesn't suspect anything. <gasps> so you do love me? Oh, of course I do. Get out of there! I hear someone coming. <gasps> On the devil now! <gasps> Mary, give me the torch, quick! Stop, or we shoot! Fire! I'm not mistaken. This belongs to me, Governor. And one day, I'll come back and claim everything else you stole from me. Come back here! Hurry before they catch you. One day, I'll return for you. Wait for me. <gasps> uh, 
This is delicious. Yeah, it's really I did himself. As my grandmother used to say, a sailor's not a sailor until he knows how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Santa Can? I'm not very hungry. I'm going back to Labuan to get Marianne. I have no choice. You must understand. To Labuan? To get Marianne? This is hardly a fitting place for a refined young lady, Sandikan. Women cause trouble, chum. They can never keep their mouth shut. But I love her, and I want to live with her. We're kindred spirits. I'll be leaving tomorrow. Alone. Await my return. should have made him take us along. Risking everything for a girl is insane, so if he wants to do it, he can do it by himself. Word has it that Lord Quillong is going to marry the governor's niece. Oh, it simply can't be. Can't imagine how the silly bungler brought it off. Marianne may be a tasty tidbit, but not even for her would I be old Brooke's son-in-law. Spencer, is there anything wrong? Hey! Just investigating a strange noise, but it was only a fox. for the 18th of May. Whom will you invite, sir? The creme de la creme of Borneo society. The Sultan of Varuni, the Raja of Sarawak. Unfortunately, one can't very well avoid inviting that crashing ball, Lady Montmorency. This topic is what bores me, gentlemen. Good night. A sweet dreams, my dearest bride-to-be. <laughs> Can. Yes. Shh. Oh. My uncle is trying to force me into marrying Lord Guilonk against my wishes. That will never happen, my love, because you are coming away with me. Oh, Sandogan. <gasps> Quick, Nanny, help your mistress collect her things. But I... Help! <gasps> the sentry's been attacked! There's an intruder in the palace! Search the upstairs rooms! Meet me down at the postern gate. Go find him. My future wife may be in grave danger. Yes, sir. Cover yourself, lad. That's my uniform that man has on, sir. Oh, by Jove, it's Sandokan. Yes, I thought I'd drop by and deliver my wedding gift. Oh, Miss Murray, you won't because you'll be nanny, will you? I'll write you every day, nanny. Well, the postage won't come to much since you'll be confined to your quarters here in the palace for the foreseeable future, my girl. Like no one will have. 
help you. You didn't have to go to all that trouble. I could have handled it on my own. You didn't see why you should have all the fun. We're partners, after all. By the way, where's Marianne? What happened to her? Somebody must have found out and stopped her. Well, you can't go back to rescue her. So I'd say it's up to someone else. I won't let you risk getting yourself in trouble for me ever again. Not only will I stay out of trouble, I will perform miracles. <laughs> All right, start now. Show us who's best. Come on, come on. What are you waiting for? You're too big for your britches. If you disobey your captain, you do so at your own risk. You'll never even scratch me. Hey! Hey! hey. You want to lose a leg or an arm? It's your choice. <laughs> Actually, both you blighters are under arrest. Stop him! That's all right, lads. This one will do just fine. The bait's on the hook. Now we wait and see if the fish bites. We're playing a dangerous game. Guards, I must speak to the governor immediately. Don't holler your blooming head off, mate. Yes, you wanted to see me? Bard says sleep often brings good counsel. <laughs> he should have added, especially if followed by a decent breakfast. I accept your kind invitation, sir. The board looks to be better than the bed in this establishment. And that gallows in the courtyard is really food for thought. I'm certain we can find a way for you to avoid it. Ah, good morning, my dear. Good morning, uncle. Good morning, miss. You look enchanting. What are you doing here? Why isn't he in the dungeons? An act of clemency to the man who is going to deliver Sandokan to us. You mustn't betray him. Don't look at me like that. Do you really expect me to choose to swing on the end of a gallows I'm pole? I'm sure you'll find a way of convincing my naive niece that we're acting in her best interests as well. <sighs> and now, if you'll excuse us, I must show some maps to my future nephew by marriage. Please tell me this is all a ruse so that Sandokan can save me without danger. Don't worry, Marianne. Hmm? Because that pig, Sandokan, will never again be around here to abuse your sentiments, you poor thing. Is that the way you speak of your best friend? Are the concepts of honor and loyalty entirely foreign to you? Oh, Marianne, I'm afraid that your romantic nature has led you into a fatal misjudgment. All he ever cares about is the next bottle or the next girl. I despise you, Yanitz. You don't know what I'm putting up with in the name of friendship, Marianne. It couldn't be better, Gwilunk. We'll have both Sandokan and his wretched friend in our grasp. It's only a matter of time. All right, Yanis, here are the maps. He'll cut through this pass to reach the palace. We'll set an ambush for him in this valley, which he'll have to enter from the southwest. We'll block it off here, and here, and he's trapped. This plan is going to require the deployment of a great many men. If it's going to work. But, sir, this way the palace will remain undefended. Is that why? A couple of sentries at the gate will be more than sufficient. Now it's up to us. Are you ready? <laughs> now, each of you must carry out his assigned task. We'll meet at the bay at sunset. Ah! 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 Marianne! Oh! Sandokan! Don't worry, my darling. Everything's under control. But you don't mean to say... I mean... I mean, I thought Yanitz was... It was all part of a ploy we thought up to fool your uncle. 
And I even slapped him. I'm so ashamed of myself. I'm sure that made it all the more convincing. You can apologize to him later. Now it's time for us to leave the palace. Oh. We've been wandering around these cursed mountains for hours. Just a little longer, Your Excellency. Very well. Belong? Hmm? <laughs> Pull that! We're on to your little game. I knew there'd be some funny business going on here. Attack him, both of you! <laughs> uh? Uh? Cowards like Lord Guilanc are never dangerous. They always send their underlings to do their dirty work for them. Why did you come back to the palace, Guilanc? To prove that Yanis was lying through his teeth and have him killed. Uh, I was sure of it from the start. There's no time to waste. We have to get Yanis out of this trap. Here we are. That's the valley, Your Excellency. Oh, where's Lord Guilanc? Oh, he went back to the palace. He was worried about his fiancée, but if all's well, he'll be back in time for the assault. And oh. as regards our plan of attack, I made a slight variation. We'll wait for Sandokan on top of that ridge. From up there, he'll see us. I don't think we need to worry about that. Go and join the others. I'll try and lure Brook and his men down. When you're ready, we'll spring the trap on your signal. James Brooke. There's that cursed Sandokan. Don't let him get away! <laughs> Little brother, you're truly exceptional! useful to me alive, at least until I've shown the world who you really are and what you did to my father. I understand. Hurry, Sandokan! The soldiers will be here any minute! Come on! Let's finish what we started! to risk it. There's no other way. I'm ready. I'll have you sooner or later. It's so hard to believe everything that's happened, Sandra Ken. We're together now, and soon you'll be queen of my island. Mompressem. It won't be nearly as luxurious as the palaces you're used to, but it's your new home, and my men and I will shower you with our devotion. <laughs> hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I must ask Yanis if you can ever forgive me for slapping him. Feeling better after your little swim, Marianne? Yes, but I'm terribly embarrassed about my behavior. That slap I gave you was simply unforgivable. I should have known that you'd never dream of betraying Sandokan. Each of us played his part, that's all. Yes, but yours was the most difficult one of all. <laughs> May I consider myself forgiven now? Absolutely, Marianne. Well done. Do you still say women only bring trouble? Oh, I never said anything of the kind, Kamamori. <laughs> 